Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Morning Motivation. My name is Coach Rhonda, and I am happy to be with you this morning to motivate you to advance. I am so um, elated, guys, um, about just the change and the shifting of things that are happening this year. I feel this momentum to just press forward. I can feel the freedom, and uh, it's almost like a snowball effect of things just beginning to happen quickly, just like the scripture in Amos that things, said things will begin to happen so fast it'll make your head spin one thing after the other. And when you look around, all you will see is blessings. That's kind of how I feel right now, just because of the breakthroughs and the uh, things that God is doing in this season of my life that I want to pour into you guys. And so this morning, I just want to give you some power nuggets for advancement. Your advancement is my priority, right? Your ability to move forward and step into what God has called you to step into is my focus. And so this morning, in no specific order, I'm going to give you some nuggets that I have just been gleaning from and learning over the past few weeks. Um, just from uh, spiritual leaders in my life and just people that God is connecting me to to help me move forward into what he's calling me to walk in. And I feel like it's so vital even for your um, progression. And so one of the nuggets that I want to give to you today is about um, just your core values. I've taught on core values. I've um coach people about creating core values and all of that good stuff. But over these past few weeks, the Lord has been connecting the dots about just the importance of our core values and how they correlate with our purpose and um, just our ability to stay motivated. That was one of the things that we learned on Sunday in the sermon that was taught by my pastor, really just talking about core values and how to lead as leaders, you know, self-governing ourselves, and then also um, learning how to be um, a leader to other people. And one, and I don't want to get off, but just so you know, regardless of what you believe you have been designed to do, one of the things that is an innate part of your uh, birthright, your identity as a human being is to disciple and to lead others. Whether we do it on purpose or we do it, um, uh, yes, yeah, so whether we're intentional about our leadership or whether we just don't even consider ourselves a leader, somebody is watching us. And so how we carry ourselves and what we reproduce, because we reproduce after our own kind. So whatever we are reproducing, um, just know that uh, you are a leader. First you lead you, and then you lead others. But uh, just to talk about the core values, one of the nuggets that I want to leave with you today is just the importance of core values um, and how core values are tied to your purpose. If you don't know what God has called you to do, your core values will be on, uh, well, I take that back. Let me re reword it. Everybody has core values. Whether you are aware of what those core values are or not, um, it does not matter. Because the core value is the code that you live by. Um, and my pastor, she talks about this all the time, but your your core values is the code that you live by. Core values guide your um, um, your life. It is a guide. It provides boundaries. It gives you a scope of what you believe. And so the core values are literally, um, yeah, it's just the guiding principles that you live by that develop your personality that that are a part of your personal brand because um, that's a buzzword for uh, just the ages, especially with coaches, but just developing your brand, core values are that foundation. And um, it, it's about what makes you authentic. Uh, being aware of your core value produces authenticity, right? And so with your purpose, your purpose, um, it, your core values are birthed out of or should be birthed out of what your purpose is or what God has called you to do. But what I thought was very interesting that one of uh, my spiritual mamas, uh, my spiritual mama talked about on Sunday was that 
um, with your core value, she said, don't create goals, right? And uh, she said, don't create goals. Establish your core values and then um, walk out your ideas based off of what your core values is. And when she said it, it stuck out. I was like, wow. So we've all been taught. Right? We've all been taught to, uh, in the beginning of the year, write out this whole list of goals that you want to achieve. And me personally, I've struggled with that process of just writing out of goals and executing them. But when she said, don't write out your goals, write out your core values and de define what you want to change throughout this year. She told us to pick out three things. Um, but she said, define what you want to change throughout this year and begin to just walk out your core values based off of what you know of these few things that you want to change. And that was so profound because um, it helped you with making the small changes every day to achieve this desired end result. And so um, I'm going to give you a quote. This is another nugget, um, a quote by Zig Ziglar. He's one of my um, – a motivational speaker that I really love, he says, you are free to choose, but the choices you make today will determine what you will have be and do in the tomorrow of your life, right? And so when we start talking about our core values and even the choices that we make, these, um, our life is a sum total of the core values that we hold. One of the core values that I've always had that was drilled in me by my mom was do right because it's right. Um, and anybody, if you've been following me, you know that's one of the things that you're going to hear. I'm going to do right because it's right. Not because you do me right, um, but because uh, it, it's just right to do. And my right is based off of the word. My right is based off of just um, the uh, the discipline that I received growing up. So you will treat people right. Um, I was raised in a, a household and from a perspective of Simple stuff like if you go eat, like if you don't have food to feed everybody, you wait till your company leaves and then you eat. So it's just just simple things. So old school training, hallelujah, that we got to bring back. But I said that to say these things develop my core values. So with that concept of, of just I do right because it's right or just walking in integrity because that's really what it is. Um, that is one of the guiding principles that keeps me from doing certain things or that gives me the scope of what I should do. So, prime example, um, stealing is not, like, that's wrong. One of the Bible says thou shalt not steal. Uh, one of the attributes of Satan is uh, he still kills and destroys, and so I don't want to look like him because he's not my father. And so stealing is something that you don't do, right? But stealing in its whole entirety, as it relates to just your core values, um, um, as it relates to your core values, when you have this um, this core value of integrity, even if that's an area that you have struggled in, you can put things in place and begin to, like, it's your gauge to safeguard. So if you know you have a problem with stealing, I don't even know why we're, no, it's just an example. So if you know you have a problem with um, stealing uh, people's ideas or stealing people's property or whatever, um, and you're trying to develop uh, integrity, now your decisions will be made based off of integrity, like the definition of what you know integrity is and what you understand integrity to look like, right? And so um, when you're faced with situations that could go against that core value, it is your measuring stick to know, yes, I should do this, or no, I shouldn't, right? I hope that makes sense. Let me see if I can give you a better example. When your core value is to, uh, okay, be accountable, right? Taking responsibility, um, taking responsibility for your actions and being accountable to others, right? Number one, you know if you want to become a better leader um, and, um, yeah, just walk as a leader that is accountable, that um, is integral, uh, your, when you begin to make the decisions, the choices to become a better leader um, and, and to become a more, even more accountable, now you know 
that in order for me, because this is all a part of assessing, right? You know, as you assess, in order for me to become more accountable to my actions to be a better integral leader, I need to surround myself with people who are uh, accountable. So you know that lets you know what type of environment or what type of people you need to connect to. Then um, uh, to be integral, I need to be more uh, to be accountable. I need to be honest. So who are people that I can be honest with um, who can hold me accountable for what um, for my leadership style? Of being a better leader, right? And so now you know you either, if you're struggling with accountability and following through in an area, you may need to get a coach who can um, help you uh, stay accountable to um, um, following through with uh, creating an event. You may need a coach who to, uh, or you may need uh, just a spiritual parent that can help you stay the course in ministry to make sure that you're walking in integrity and honorable before the Lord because you don't want to kill your witness. You get what I'm saying? So these core values are the measuring stick and the measuring tool that you um, need in order for you to be successful. Um, and even in being successful, you have to know what success looks like to you, right? Um, and so even with success, it's not going to look the same with everybody. So success for me could be um, having, uh, having uh, adding five new clients every um, three months, right, to my business. Success to you could be um, um, having your children – uh, being taken care of and having everything that they need, or your children um, being, uh, yeah, you're having a happy house, a house of peace. Peace could be your um, um, measure of success for your household, right? And so with that, what core values do you need to adapt or what core values do you have that will help keep you in alignment with these Go with this um, vision of success for yourself. So in this morning motivation, I want to encourage you, right? Number one, you need to know what um, your idea is. Like, what is your idea of success? That's number one. Um, defining success. What does success look like for you this year in 2020? Like, take the time and write it down. You don't have to write this long list of 5, 10, 20 years old. What? All you need to do, pick out one, two, maybe three things. Um, what is success for you? So if I accomplish these things, if I lose 20 pounds um, this year, I give myself um, from now until December to lose 20 pounds, um, I'll, that will be success to me. If I, um, if I actually step out into ministry, if I um, uh, take, take that next step and say, God, I want, to um, step into the call that you call me to walk in. What do you believe that looks like? And um, just to kill that lie that, well, we don't know how God is going to move, that contradicts Scripture. Or we don't know what God really wants to do. That contradicts Scripture because he said, it is his one, I'm asking you shall receive, seeking you shall find, knocking the door shall be open. He knows the plans he has for your life, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you hope and a future. So if he knows the plan, that means you need to schedule a meeting with the with your CEO, which is God, to get insight into the plan that he has for your life in order for you to be able to walk those things out, right? So you need to have scheduled meetings with the CEO so you can get your instructions so that you can begin to partner with him to walk those things out. So there is no, I don't know. I mean, we just going to wing this thing to see what happens. Absolutely not. God is a God of excellence, and he is requiring excellence from his children in this season, and you are more than capable of doing it. Why am I saying that? Because I'm stepping it up myself. It is time and high time for us to become visible and to do what God called us to do and to honor him because when we don't, walk in the highest level of excellence that God has called us to walk in, when we don't put forth every effort, we are doing that as a service, and it is potentially an offense to him, because he has placed so much in you that he like, come on now, let's get it out, let's get the walk, and let's do what we need to do. So um, 
So, yeah, get with your CEO. Spend some time. Schedule it if you need to so that you can begin to get the plan that God has for your life and what he wants you to do um, today, this week, uh, this month, this year, right? Um, get those plans, get that vision, ask them to make it plain. Next thing, I want you to begin to say, okay, my core values. What are my core values? All you got to have is five. What are my core values? How do I lay these things out? How do I make them plain? God, what is, uh, like, what do you want me to do? Like, what are the core values that I need? What are the core values that I have? Are these core values values that will help me get to the um, per, the vision of success that, I have that I see for myself. Am I being authentic? And if not, what do I need to do to get there? So I want you guys to begin to do some self evaluation. Absolutely, if necessary. And just to go ahead and cut out the excuses, if you're going to be successful, you have to do this, right? Um, it doesn't take long, and sometimes it might take long. So I'm not even going to tell you that. It may take a while. It may take some time for you to mark out and carve out time for you to sit and really begin to assess yourself where you are and what you need to do. However, in this season, um, God is blowing on your efforts. So when the time that you invest in making sure that you are in alignment with him, um, it, he has the ability and the potential to advance your steps that now. He has the ability, the potential, and the heart. There's a grace for it now, but you got to do the work. Faith without works is dead. I've been hearing that a lot. Have faith to do uh, and believe, but you got to have, you got to know what you need to be having faith for. So um, begin to sit and think about what are my core values. Am I living up to the standard of what I, of what God is calling me to live up to? And if not, how do I get there? Um, am I um, walking out my most authentic self to the highest level that God has called me to walk it out? Um, and if not, what do I need to do? Who do I need to add to my life? Who do I need to subtract? What do I need to do in order to make this thing manifest and come to life, in order for me to be the person God has called me to be? And so I want to encourage you guys. Um, I hope there was some nuggets of power that you got for your advancement in this morning motivation. I want to encourage you, admonish you, and, and just let you know it's time to take a little break, get a little breather, and really begin to assess your life. Get a clear picture of where you want to go so that you can hit the ground running. I'm telling you, I feel this grace and a snowball effect where when we begin to, and it's not even a sacrifice, so we got to stop um, looking at it like, oh, let me sacrifice this time so I can figure out what. No, this is an honor to be able to sit with your father and get instruction, but also this saves time. It does not extend time. So when you become more strategic, with the insight and the information that you receive from the Lord, you will begin to have more time to spend with your children. You'll have more time to uh, uh, grow and create and develop that life that you know God has called you to live and really be effective in advancing the kingdom on the earth because it is necessary. So your your nonprofit that God has called you to walk in the time is now. That school that God called you to um, develop the plan for and to start, the time is now. Those um, um, shoes that God called you to design, because I literally see a pair of shoes, like shoes, um, clothing, um, um, modeling, whatever the thing is that God has called you to do, he is opening up uh, our, the time and he is extending and breathing on things that would take forever, like that would take 10, 20, 30 years, he is literally breathing on them things and accelerating the time um, as you begin to get into the secret place to get strategy uh, from heaven for what he wants you to do. And so I admonish you, get in there with God and begin to meet with your CEO. Tiffany Montgomery, she says that a lot. God is my CEO, right? And even my pastor, she really talks, Dr. Faith Walkerman, really talks about and, um um, uh, yeah, Dr. Faith and Pastor Soko, uh, they talk a lot about just uh, strategies and getting in there with the Lord and becoming responsible and accountable for what he has released into your hands. So I admonish you to do the same. Take the time 
out this week, you guys, because you don't want to miss this next breath of God that he's going to breathe on the thing that he's put into your hands. Begin to strategize. Begin to um, partner with the Holy Spirit so that he can begin to release his plans so that you can walk effectively and get strategy, power, and revelation for what he is calling you to do in this season. My name is Coach Rhonda. If you need a consultation, if you need some help, like I don't even know where to start, um, hit me up, send me a message on my website. Um, you can schedule your 15-minute consultation so we can talk. It is absolutely free, but you can schedule your free 15-minute consultation so we can see where you are and where you need to be. Because my goal is to help 100 people this year um, step into purpose. And so I want you to be one of those people, 100 people to purpose. That is the mission. So it's time for you to step into purpose and begin to walk out what God has called you to walk out in your life. Get motivated. Ooh, it's time to move. It's time to move. So, yes, have a great week. Um, I pray blessings of God over you. I thank you. Um, I, I, I just thank the Lord for the insight, revelation, and, and just the clarity that he's going to release to you in this week. Um, I thank you, Lord, for waking them up in the midnight hour, yes, uh, to begin to release revelation and strategy concerning your plans that you have for them, Father. We thank you, God for uh, just your goodness. Um, so you guys, in Jesus' name, amen. Get motivated, get excited, have an awesome week, and I will meet you here again next week or next week's um, a weekly motivation. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful week. Bye-bye.